um, what we have been witnessing over the last 11 years is, is a large scale and systematic uh, attempt and a successful attempt to disenfranchise uh, the poor, uh, the left, workers, uh, black people, brown people, uh, Native Americans, college students, and so on. Uh, the charge of voter fraud, as Laurie points out, has been used to um, basically effect step one of a two-part process. Okay? The two-part process is, on the one hand, to shrink the pool of, of opposing voters as much as possible. In other words, to make the population of, of eligible voters as small as you can. And that has involved uh, everything from interference with the census, which is actually a crucial step here, to the uh, computerization of voter rolls, to the revival or concoction of sort of new Jim Crow requirements so that people can't really vote, voter caging. There is a huge menu of tactics used to shrink the pool of eligible voters. That is step one. Step two is to then uh, uh, manipulate the votes cast through electronic means. So uh, vote, the charges of voter fraud, which are consistently lo you know, levied against the Democratic Party by the Republicans, are indeed, as Laurie says, used to justify these draconian measures to uh, shrink the pool of eligible voters. Okay? There really is no evidence of any voter fraud, uh, you know, old-fashioned ballot stuff. And you can't even really vote once in this country. <laughs> How are you supposed to vote seven times? And I have to, she was too modest, but I have to recommend her new book, The Myth of Voter Fraud, because it is an authoritative analysis of the facts. And the fact is that there is really no such thing. And the acorn was taken down because acorn was, among other things, getting out the vote and they were charged with systematic voter fraud, among other things, and they are gone. So this is a very, very potent accusation. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, the party that is actually disenfranchising people and actually stealing elections is the party, the only party that's talking about it, see, and uh, effectively monopolizing the issue as a way to keep on doing it. Okay. Meanwhile, at the same time that these various laws are being pushed through, and it's happening even as we speak. I mean, New Hampshire now, the governor of New Hampshire is trying to pass a law making it harder for college students to vote. This is happening all across the country. At the same time, we have a, uh, an almost completely electronic voting system in the United States that is now so sophisticated that its operations are just about undetectable. And Jonathan Simon will talk about the use of uh, use and abuse of exit polls to make that to make that happen. Okay. Now you have to understand that this is not a speculation. This is not a conspiracy theory. Uh, that this is based on copious and solid evidence of repeated election theft by the Republicans, mostly uh, since 2000. In 2002, there were arguably four uh, uh, Senate races stolen. The most uh, notorious was the theft of the election in Georgia, when Max Cleland, you know, the triple amputee who was very popular in the state, a conservative Democrat, uh, won in an upset. To date, three different people have gone on the record confirming that the president of the Diebold Voting Machine Company personally flew out from Texas to Georgia to supervise the placement of an illegal software patch on all the Diebold machines in two populous, democratic-leaning counties in Georgia. Three people have gone on the record with this, uh, and these are insiders. And it is still not a story. It is still a conspiracy theory. It's, it's, it didn't happen. In fact, it, it, it seems to have happened there, it seems to have happened in New Hampshire, and it clearly happened in Colorado, and something happened in Minnesota to elect Norm Coleman. I mean, aside from the convenient death of Paul Wellstone, uh, 
there, you know, they didn't have Diebold machines in Minnesota, but there is some evidence that the, 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 the outcome there is suspicious. All right? Now, there were no exit poll results for 2002 because of a computer breakdown. <laughs> but anyway, we're going back to 2002. We've written books about 2004. I've written one sitting right there, but I'm not here to plug that. Uh, there is by now uh, uh, absolutely inarguable evidence that the, the election of George Bush was based on theft in Ohio. Uh, there were a number, even though, even though the press uh, went on and on about the Democratic sweep in 2006, still a number of races were uh, evidently stolen in that election as well. Although Obama did indeed sweep to office, uh, there is considerable evidence that he actually got millions more votes than he is said to have received. We're told he won by nine and a half million votes. It's called a decisive victory, not a landslide. But evidence uh, from, among others, Richard Charnin, C-H-A-R-N-I-N, who has a very persuasive model for computing, who has actually won elections over the last, what is it, Jonathan, since well, 1948 since or something? Well, okay, yeah. yeah it goes it way goes back. back way. He argues that Obama won by 23 million votes. Uh, there is other evidence to suggest that his margin of victory was actually much larger than 9.5 million. And then in the 2010 election, which the press routinely refers to as, you know, cleanly uh, uh, swept by the Republicans, is rife with evidence that uh, there was a red shift, and Jonathan will talk about the red shift, in certain of those states. Now, now why is this important for us? I mean, aside from the fact that the whole notion of democratic governance is based on it, right now the left is galvanized by what's happened in Wisconsin, and rightly. Everybody feels that the movement is reborn. They consistently invoke the early civil rights movement and so on, a sense of excitement and mission. Well, the early civil rights movement was, uh, to a considerable extent, based on the reclamation of voting rights. The movement in Wisconsin is all fired up to hold recall elections. They will be using machines and uh, uh, it will be using voting machines and vote counting machines that are completely untrustworthy and as Bob has noted, owned and managed by private interests with a far right wing agenda. Okay? Let me just give you this datum. Both Diebold and ESNS, Diebold is now called Premier. Diebold and ESNS were originally one company called American Information Systems. That company was started by two brothers named Bob and Todd Urosevich. U-R-O-S-E-V-I-C-H. These guys are beyond born again. They're a couple of Oklahoma Christianists who are not in this game simply to make a buck. They're in this game because the Christian right does not believe in democracy. You know, the Christian right, which, which moved out of the um, Christian coalition in the early 90s and basically seized the Republican Party, is solidly dedicated to righting the wrongs committed by a Democratic majority. You see? If you can't win politically through legitimate democratic means, you have to find other ways to basically impose your agenda. The system that was set up, uh, AIS split into ESNS and Diebold. The Urosevich brothers are, are still uh, way up high in both organizations. Bob and I could go on and on about the, the consistent links between the Christian far right and the, you know, basically the ownership and maintenance of our voting system Certainly, it's questionable at the very least. But the fact is that unless and until the left starts to talk about an issue that has been relegated to the netherworld of conspiracy theory, uh, the prospects for any kind of positive change are dim.